All right, this is uh, Eve Evans and uh, Jake Casio. Hey, what's up? And we're uh, looking at one of our early generations of our rotary motor. This is the uh, generation 2.0 because it's drastic difference than my version 1.0 rotary motor. This is my three. Remember that one in the middle. The one in the middle. Yeah, I'm gonna go with 2.0 because this is the 1.0 we have video of. Two, this one is the second one I got video of. Now, we got a little sequence problem on my sensor relays. I this thing is uh, this thing is all caveman. I mean, it's running batteries on the one side, and we're using uh, basically limit switches and a simple relay set to be a self latching relay by a simple wiring change I've done. Um, uh, I should be using a uh, uh, a cog wheel, a uh, clack cratchit wheel, a clack and reel, a uh, what? Cratchit? Ratchet. What are we talking about? Ratchet? ratchet. Yeah. Really, it's a ratchet. <laughs> really, should be using a ratchet, but I just have a, a simple one single arm ratchet on a giant arm. So uh, that's just how I did this one at first. Uh, I was messing around. Um, it's got a simple geared up motor system. Um, that gives me the power I need to swing that mass around. Um, we're getting we're getting pretty good at the at the we're a little late on the top on the on the weight mass move there. So you can see it's coming up um, after top dead center. Uh, I got I got to move some some metal ramps there, and um, you can see I'm not even getting close to where I need to be on the up towards the center axis of rotation. Um, it's just a simple those are simple movement things and where I move my sensors and where I move my ramps and stuff you know um, it's you can see you can see the ramp contacts those are pieces of sprung metal I mean I'm telling you this is I did as caveman as I could because you know I'm, a, I'm an electrical engineer I could do processing I could do you know all the all the fun fun stuff pro, you know put optical sensors but you know there's nothing you can't. The man just can't beat a relay and a contact switch for simplicity, and when you're trying to mock something up. So that's what I got here. Just uh, just showing it go. Yeah, even when it's sequenced wrong, the thing still rotates really well. We have some other, earlier video. It was even it was even just completely out of whack, and it was still rotating pretty good because. I don't know, about every four or five times it would get the proper sequence and that would give it enough energy to keep going regardless of when it was, you know, going wonky. But uh, it's a pretty simple setup. You know, I'll refine it here a little with my sensor setup and uh, get my contacts redone so, uh, you know, I get this thing going to where I want it to go. And uh, Then we'll load the rotor and see how we go. But, you know, right now it's... It's just barely getting enough power to keep itself going here. I mean, on this rotation, you know, it, it should be spinning up faster. Uh, and with it unloaded, it would if we had the sequence right. You know, so I just gotta gotta take care of that. But I just wanted to get some video on it. See, it's like wow, crazy ass shit machine going wonky donkey. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any way to stop it. <laughs> Do we? We really don't have any way to stop it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, we're pretty much, you know, uh, like it is. Is you know, I can grab it, I'll stop it. You know, it's not like spinning me out of control. You know, uh, it's not like it has any kind of weird, uncontrollable mass system. But, um, but yeah, I think it's gonna be. It's fun. Um, it. it I, I think of all the gravity type motors I've seen that are basically inertial mass based slides and I've, do, I've built slide systems you know I built other types balance systems unbalanced you know really this this you get the proper geared motor with the right mass you know I've got a new system I'm working on too that will allow it will be more simplistic than this but uh, for now, this is a good starting point. I mean, or not even a starting point, but a good a good point to go with. I'm pretty uh, pretty happy to see it running. You know, my kids are pretty happy fun to see it just kind of rotating along. You know, uh, um, but 
I think you've seen a lot of systems. Like I, I know I've seen a couple that are like giant hydraulic systems, and uh, you know throwing a mass around, and they must be tens of thousands of dollars that guy must have put into it. You know, and I've seen systems that use the slides and gears and other stuff. You know, those are really I mean, uh, geared moving slides and those all those systems moving masses like just rolling ball bearings around. You know, they're not easy mechanisms to go with. I mean, this mechanism is simplistic. It's shockless. That's another thing that if you tune this, this, this tune system is shockless. You know, um, the mass wants to move and the rotation is moving. Um, you're not stopping it from going where it wants to go. You're kind of going with it, capturing it, using it. The idea would be top dead center. You would catch it. Um, you know, on the lower end, you would like, it would let it go, let it rotate in. Um, you know, that, that's, that's, you know, all my analysis and my, uh, building a lot of different types of devices, you know, that's what they want to do. I built my first version out of cardboard, a little piece of cardboard and weighted mass. Hey, this is how masses wanted to go naturally. And I could get a, a, a cardboard mass all hung by itself to go two or three times just, just by following this little simple system, you know. And, and just releasing it top to the center. It will self-rotate quite a bit on its own. Um, so this is why I kind of finally came back to where I started. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Years and years. And I kind of get back where I started. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to have uh, Jake here hold the camera. And he can... Uh, he can. I'll, I'm going to go run it. Just kind of run it through where it's really supposed to go. And you guys can get a better look at the mechanism. And... Just slow it down here. Ooh. Here I'm grabbing snow. There we go. Okay. So what we're really supposed to do? <laughs> okay. What we're really supposed to do is um, you want it up here on the top. Simple, right? You want the mass on the top. Uh, we have a geared rotor, a geared motor. Cause geared. Hey, you know why? Cause geared motors, even though they have a lot of inherent efficiencies, they can move a mass pretty well, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, on this road, on this section, we have basically a kill switch over over here. Um, there's a kill switch, and that basically kills my relay. My relay self latches, and then as soon as it hits that switch, shuts power off. And that shuts, shuts the gear motor off. Oh, there it is there. <laughs> Pointing down here. I'm, just, I'm on the wrong side. So it hit points that, you know, this basically kills it. It's a simple metal again. You know, I'm, I, I go primitive, man. I like people, I like things to just to build them and see how they go, you know. Um, these are the turn, these are like the relay on engage, motor engage relays. As it hits, boom, this thing goes. Now you can see if I had this on a nice simple ratchet, um, it would ratchet around, it would always be under some kind of a support, you know, and it would get to here, you would, even if I missed a little, I would still be on the ratchet, it wouldn't be the slop, you know. And so this is, this is just, you know, first stage slop. Um, but that's the idea. It would hit this contact here. It rotates in, gets in an inner position. The mass, the motor holds it. It's dead now. It hit the second back reverse switch here, killed it. When it hit the switch, it kills it. That's all it is. It's a kill. It's a kill on the relay, you know. And if you see my relay system here, it's a simple 12 volt relay. Um, it's got a. I've got the relay set so the relay self latches, and all that means is you take some of the contacts on the relay. And you basically jumper that to the to the engage on the relay, the, the solenoid on the relay. So that engages self engages. And then what I have is this this switch here is part of is part of the contact on that self engage. It uses the same contacts here, and basically it just cuts that that gap. I mean, it, ba it basically opens it. So we, and this is a this switch is set with a normally uh, open, a normally closed contact. I mean, this one over here by the motor, it's on a normally closed. So when it closes and it opens, that opens this relay, really disengages. Very simple. Batteries, here are the battery bank. The battery is just basically some nickel metal hydro batteries. I've got like, uh, I think I got 10 cells in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. 10. I've got them in parallel. So I got 20 cells in parallel. You know, it's basically 13 volt, 1.2 volts each cell. So, you know, 13 on volts. Um, that engages on these contacts, this one and this one, and these are connect here, and that basically does the rotor engagement. So, on the upper rotor, you basically now, on this swing up side, we want to be near the mass, near the center axle rotation. 
Pretty simple. Standard Phoenix. Physics there. Phoenix. Physics. And uh, we hit here. Boom. Up. There you go. See, look at that. That's where you really wanted to gauge. So if you hit your timing right, I'll engage a little bit before to match my speed. And I'll get the now. Of course, it's going to keep accelerating if you do it right. That's the loading. you got to load it right. So I don't know where I want to load it yet. I'm just trying to play around with my timing. Um, eventually, when I get that a little better, I'll put a load on here. I'll put my generator on a pulley. I'll put a little generator power out here and get some power out of it just to see what's going on. And that will give me my load control uh, so I don't get rotating too fast. Um, you, of course, build it bigger. You can build it. I mean, it's not going to matter. You can make these arms out another two feet. You know, five feet, ten feet. You want to build it bigger. You're just going to get a lot more time to work, <laughs> time to accelerate. You know, um, and that's all fine. Of course, I'm just using flat boards. You know, you're going to have a wind effects. You know, you can put some you know rounded edges on it. You can put some, you know, uh, doweling on the front. Anything to break up the wind if you're really worried about it. Um, I got these these two gold things. Whoa, hey, there we go. I was in context. Um, you have these two uh, gold rotary things here on the end. These are actually rotary solenoids on one for my earlier version of the device. They're purely just for mass. I was just giving it a little mass for the system. That's all they are. <laughs> they used to be for my version one. You'll see in my video the version one. Uh, they actually were turning the rotors on the version one. But, you know, they're very simple solenoids. That's a whole other thing. They're not magnetic at all. I mean, they're magnetic, but there's no permanent magnets. They're very inefficient, you might say, and they don't have an extreme lot of power. But they're very cool internally. Uh, I ripped a few apart to take a look. But I got them really dirt cheap. I mean, I got these babies for virtually nothing. Um, they're hundreds of dollars, and I got them for nothing. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> once again, we're about top to center. You're going to let it fall. It's going to hit. It's going to get the right position. See, it's going to go down. A little off the timing there. See? I'm going to load it here a little. See? You're getting a better phasing when I load it. See, it's getting towards the outside and inside. It's still coming up a little late on the inside. I want to, I would want to engage it sooner. And uh, on, the, on the upside, on the upside, uh, it seems to be fine. I'm a little late on the uh, upper stroke, so I'm losing basically almost pretty much half my, well, there's a, there's a good three quarters. So I would say maybe half, half my power. Now, I'm not made, I'm going to hook up any current probes to measure the motor or anything. It doesn't draw a lot. I think it was a 500 milliamp at this full location here. I'll measure some stuff in there. Um, I'm going to let this go here, and you can see what happens when it goes wonky when I'm unloading it. Okay. You can see the sequence is a little off. See, now this one gets a little wonky here. See, she's not engaged anymore because. <clears throat> the timing's off on it because the timing I kind of did it. I set the timing uh, while I while I was moving it off by hand. So you know, those are now this type of stuff you can accomplish better with a processor, right? I agree. You know, I changed it to a microprocessor. I could uh, put a lot of uh, uh, better timing out with RPM and sequence a little better with coffee. Yeah, but, uh, we'll, we'll look at that. You know, but the big thing is I'm gonna make myself a little wooden cog. And ratchet, so I can uh, just screw it out the ratcheting a lot. See how that helps. Um, and then uh, once I get that done, I'll uh, basically throw a motor on and, and we'll load it and get some power. I'll see what kind of power out. Um, as you see, some people might want to know. Some people might want to know ooh, uh, why I chose to use batteries like this. And instead of like, uh, you know, commutator and putting power on here, you know, um, why'd I do it? Well, I had a bunch of nickel metal hydro batteries. <laughs> and uh, they, uh, the commutators and stuff and loss of resistance and stuff through them can be a pain in the ass sometimes. It, it just, it's tough to sometimes sequence things right. I didn't know how I was going to build it as I built it. I built a lot of, built it, just kind of threw it, built a built, and I didn't want to deal with it. I just didn't want to deal with it. I need the, I need the mass anyway to counterbalance this mass, this whole system over here, the motor and everything. I needed something over here anyway.
to counterbalance all my weight here, see? And so this is another thing. I'm not even balanced. You see, look at my, my motors. This, this stuff right in this stage, this stage here, this stuff should be balanced. I didn't even balance the system. This is heavier than this side. That's not good. This should be completely balanced right now, and uh, that would be better. I didn't even care. I just built it. Whatever. We'll throw it. And uh, I'm just showing you the, the roughness of the design. You know, a lot of things people build, they build them with... Uh, do care and extra precision to try to make it like you know this this little bit of power make it just 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 gets it to work and you've seen guys you'll see online you'll see people with like motors and they don't rotate and they don't they want to kind of go halfway you know I mean there's a point when you you want to get to those points I get it I'm not I mean I'm a I'm a I'm a perpetual motion advocate just clear and born I'm just saying that you know you got to start at a stage that is realistic. That really works, you know, that you can functionally say, you know, my bearings are okay, my system is balanced, my motors and can engage and stuff, you know, uh, that my wiring's okay, my my contacts, things like that. You need to experience the build. You need to experience the build, building experience, um, so that you can move, progress, you know. And I built lots of different stuff, and uh, you know, when you, your building progression is important, you know. I've got this one of my earlier versions. I used reed relays. I used magnet pickups. Example, I had magnet pickups, the trigger relay relays. You know, I did all that. I mean, that was great. It worked. Relay relays work. I used FET systems. I had FETs laying around. I don't know if you have my FETs laying around. I mean, I was a, I went all about all out. You know, and uh, I had FETs in here and stuff. I built up. I built up. Well, actually, there were IGBTs since they gave bipolar transistors. I used IGBTs, um, I self-driven them, I preloaded them with resistors and stuff, they were ready to go, so you could just put them in like a module. And uh, you know, those, those were great. So I was, you had a more sophisticated system than this one. And when I built this one, I just said, you know, I just want to go real, I don't want to have to mess with that stuff. Working about whether my FET's engaged or not, did I get enough drive current to my FET to turn it on, my IGBT, um, did I, did I, you know, do I do all that right? You know, my time, do my, do my read relay trigger or not? Do I have enough, you know, distance, you know? <laughs> Man, you know it. <laughs> you know it when you have a, a simple limit to it. Okay, it's, uh, it, it works. So don't overdo it. You know, simplify. You can overdo it later. <laughs> but get your build experience in. Test your, your visual prototype. You know, um, like I said, we're in a, we're in a test mode here. I, I built lots of different devices, and I don't know if they're ever going to work. I don't know if this will ever work, you know, properly. Um, you know, but at least I know it will do. I know that mechanically it will drive itself. You know, I mean, that's something people should always know. That hey, my device will drive itself. Um, that that's that's it's good to know. It makes you feel good. But I've seen devices, and this thing's never going to run. I watch people put thousands of hours, I would say, into, and, into their devices, I would say, mechanically. Put lots of money into it, and the mechanically is never going to work. It's just is not going to fly. And they could have prototyped it in a simpler way and proved that out, you know, without throwing a lot of complex money or ton of stuff into it. So, um, that's about it. Uh, I'm Eve Evans, and uh, you're in the, the House of Evans shop, and uh, you know, let's keep trying, guys. We'll get there, you know. One thing I can tell you is that when we'll work, we'll know how to build it. You know, that's, you can't, you got, if you can't build it, you can't make it mass manufacture, it's not going to be any good. And I'll tell you, when I get this done, everybody will know it. I'll give it to everybody. I'll tell everybody how to do it. I'll send out plans and directions for every ounce of it, you know. I'm not looking for anything, but to, to get everything we can out to everybody, to keep us going, you know, our little community, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get somewhere, you know, take some time. It's been taking time for all of us, but together, you know, we all we can avoid greed and getting caught up in selling stocks of an invention that you can never even rotate it, that you've never even built. You know, that's the type of stuff that drags us all down. You know, guys, we need to be building stuff, letting people know what we're building. Um, let it get always, always be upfront about the how it's operating and the success of its operation. And uh, you know, uh, 
Yeah, that's how we make progress. We're not going to make this progress as greedy people who think they're going to make millions off of themselves. You know, I'm going to go against the world, and I'll keep it a lesson, and I'll keep it a secret, and uh, I'll die with that secret. You know, we're going to um, we're going to let everybody know every step of the way. So, wish you all the best of luck. Let me know what you guys think when you see, you know, your stuff. You know, if you have any questions, we'll make sure you can find me. I'm happy to help. All right. Cut it off, Jake.